Good morning, everybody. We are ready for worship today. We're going to turn it over to Alan, who's going to lead us in with today's prelude. Good morning. Well, welcome to the uh, beautiful day that we have in front of us as we gather for worship on this Sunday. And we have an art show gallery opening that you may have noticed as you walked in. I want to thank Mary Buck for sponsoring today's broadcast. For those of you who are watching from home or listening from home, uh, in memory of Sophie Sargent. And so we gather today, we have all of this excitement as we uh, hope you've been able to take a walk around, but certainly after worship, help yourself uh, to some special treats. Walk around kind of throughout the building uh, in this wing of the North Lobby or in the, the Narthex area. Uh, also into the conference room, there's some videos. And so uh, just kind of sink in and, and let yourself see some of the beauty as we've been able to uh, see all of the artwork that you've uh, contributed from this summer as you've been working on that. Uh, so big thank you to everybody who put artwork together, but also to our team that did all of the work of, of hanging the art gallery uh, this past week. It's a beautiful testament to the ways that the Holy Spirit's been at work in our congregation. So thank you very much. Also, we've got a lot going on just today, this morning. So art gallery, uh, we also have uh, families. If you'd like to stick around at kind of during that second service time slot, and then we'll have pizza served at 11.30. So if you want to hang out with me, uh, we're going to have the kids off playing some games, and we'll just spend some time talking, getting, in, getting to know each other. So if you want to stay, you're welcome to do that until 11.30 or noon. Vikings aren't playing the, uh, this afternoon, so you could be in a hurry to get back to watch football, but you don't have to. So uh, we, we invite you to join us for that. Also have a baptism here in just a few minutes. Waylon's going to be coming up here, so we're excited for you. And we uh, continue with our opening hymn. I'll invite you to stand as we sing uh, together. Open now thy gates of beauty.
you guys can be seated. We're going to invite the, we'll invite the kids to come forward at this time. Come on up, have a seat up here. Come on up, kids and unicorns. I have a very special item in my hands here. Does anybody know what this is? It's a box. It's great. What is this? A penny box. Why do you think it's a penny box? You want to take a look at it? Here, take a, take a look. Nice catch. What are some of the images you see on there? Is there anything in there? No, I know. I don't, I don't carry any pennies with me. Hmm, yeah? A prayer box, maybe. What what are some key, what are some of the pictures on there? A pig. A pig. It's a pig that's smiling, and pennies. What do you think it is? It's a small piggy bank. What do you think you would put in your small piggy bank? Money. Money. Yeah. What kind of money? Pennies. Dollars? I like, I like the way you're thinking here. I like that. Well, what do you think we could use the money that we put into the piggy banks for to help out you guys is one of the ideas that we have is getting some new books for the library. How does that sound? Do you guys like to read books? Yeah. Me too. I love to read books. Do you guys know where the library is? We'll take you on a little trip to the, to the library here soon, okay? Because in the library, we have all sorts of books, but we would like to be able to use the money that you guys put in your piggy banks. And so we're going to, uh, Kathy, they're all going to get the piggy banks during Sunday school today. You'll be able to bring that home and be able to fill your piggy bank. And as you fill it with pennies or what are we going to put in it? Some of the stuff that folds too. Yeah, right? Yeah, we're going to use that money to be able to, to help buy some books for all of you guys to be able to read. How's that sound? Good plan? Some good, fun books to learn about. What do you think? Learn about Jesus, yeah? Jesus and God and how we can live out our faith. Yeah, do you have some ideas on things you could learn? I have a lot of money at home. You got a lot of money at home? I can't wait for that piggy bank to go home and you can fill that up. We'll get all sorts of cool books, right? I love that. All right, can you guys pray with me? Thank you, God, for our piggy banks. Help us fill our piggy banks. With money to buy books, to learn about you, to learn about God, and to develop our faith. Amen. All right, Kathy, they are yours. Follow Kathy that way, unless you're heading back into worship. I will take that piggy bank, and you guys will all be getting your own piggy banks today. You get to make your own piggy banks today. How fun is that? As they are heading this direction, we're going to invite Waylon and your uh, family to come on up here, your godparents and parents, as we are going to have your baptism on this very special day. You guys come on up here. We're going to give those kids a minute. It's kind of like 35E and 35W on a Friday afternoon in the summer over there. So for those of you who can't see, that's the visual I want you to have. Still stuck. It's like that one person who just doesn't know that like you should really merge the zipper merge. They're like, no, we're just going to back everything up. All right, we're getting there. Okay. We, uh, we welcome Waylon Shower for her baptism today. Parents and sponsors, do you present her for baptism? If so, say, we do. As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, 
to nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, to care for others in the world that God made, and to work for justice and peace. Parents and sponsors, do you promise to nurture Wayland in the Christian faith as you were empowered by God's Spirit and help her live in the covenant of baptism and communion with the church? If so, say, we do. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Waylon in her new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. I invite you, congregation, to play, uh, please stand as together we join in our profession of faith. I'm going to ask, do you, profess, uh, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw us from God? We renounce them. Do we believe in God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the devil. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, you can have a seat. Waylon, we're going to have you put your head right over here. Can you help me? I need you to hold on to that for a second. Could you do that for me? Thank you very much. All right, you're looking at me like, now what's he going to do? All right, here we go. I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, see? And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Nice and warm, doesn't it? Yeah, you're wrinkling your eyebrows at me. But you've just been baptized, young lady. Now, do you want to give me that? And we're going to put that right on her head to dry off that water. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You did a great job. Nice. All right, I'm going to have all of you guys, can you guys come put a hand on her? You guys can, we're going to say a blessing together with Waylon, okay? Very good. Waylon, child of God, we asked, sustain Waylon with the gift of your Holy Spirit. I'll do your toe, okay? Sustain Waylon with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Waylon, you belong to Christ into whom you've been baptized. Alleluia. And we're going to take this from the Christ candle. Thank you very much. And let's have you hold that up. And together we are going to acknowledge your baptism. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Congregation, we welcome Waylon, the newest baptized member of the body of Christ, with our applause. All right, Waylon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you and take you down so everyone can get a good look at you. How's that sound? And then as we do this, yeah, you can still look over here. Yep, we're going to do this, okay? <laughs> this is going to be about as close as you'll get today, okay, folks? Okay, we'll go back here. Good job. Okay. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. I invite you to please stand. Share that peace with however you're comfortable doing as we share this peace uh, and begin our worship today. Begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. Let's take a moment as we pause and reflect on our week, on our day. What are the things that we want to be able to offer up and lift up to God in this moment? God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. 
Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, our sins are forgiven and we are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ and meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray, God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another, keep our feet from evil paths, turn our minds to your wisdom, and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'll invite you to please be seated. This is a special day with our art gallery opening. So uh, there was a blue insert in your bulletin you may have noticed. This will directly apply to what you're about to hear in our prayer lab minute. And uh, keep this in mind as you're walking through the art gallery today as well. Take it away, Dave Kegel. Today, I would like to invite you into the experience of Visio Divina, sacred seeing, as an ancient form of prayer that continues to be a powerful method of meditation. Art becomes the sacrament that opens our hearts to the indwelling Spirit of God. The visible makes the invisible present in a palpable way. Any piece of art can be the subject of reflection it is not necessary for it to be religious art. However, reflecting on icons has been practiced since ancient times. First, identify the art that will be the subject of your reflection. Then pick a comfortable place 
where you will not be disturbed or distracted. Relax and maybe close your eyes. Focusing on your breath can be a helpful way to center yourself in the divine. For our example today, we will use this piece called The Baptism of Christ by Dave Zelenka. Gaze at the entire piece of art. Notice the shapes, the colors, and the lighting. In a picture, notice the detail of both the foreground and background. God has been speaking to you as you meditated on this artwork. It's now time for you to respond to the divine. Allow your words to be born in the recesses of your soul. What is your response? What is your prayer? Articulate any yearnings or desires that arise. Give voice to the emotion that is whirling within. Visio Divina sets our inner stage for a soulful connection with our Maker, where intimate communion is possible. I have discovered that Visio Divina encourages the practice of viewing all of life through a sacred lens, uncovering the messages hidden within creation. All of life then becomes hallowed ground. I will leave you with the wisdom of Richard Rohr from his book, The Universal Christ. Authentic God experience always expands our seeing and never constricts it. In God, do you do not include less and less. You always see and love more and more. Thank you so much. Today for our special music, we are featuring our tenor section of the choir. They are singing a beautiful melody by Gustav Holtz. Let streams of living justice. <coughs> A reading from 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires everyone to be saved and to, be, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested to at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord.
Please stand as you are able to join in singing our gospel acclamation. Gospel reading from the 16th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So he summoned his master's debtors one by one. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into, the, into their eternal homes. Whoever, whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in very much, and who is very dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. <clears throat> well, it's good to be back from my time away with family as we welcomed our newest addition, Soren. We are all doing well, and I'm so grateful to this congregation. It's it's just incredible to come back and witness all that you have done to care for one another, to feed our neighbors, to learn and grow in prayer. So thank you so much. I learned a very important lesson upon my return to faith. Read through the scripture before you tell Pastor John that you'll preach. <laughs> Oof, huh? The scripture today from Luke is not easy. As I began my study of this passage, the first thing I read began. Commentators routinely remark that the parable of the dishonest manager stands among the most challenging texts in the New Testament, <laughs> often regarding it as the most perplexing of Jesus' parables. Great. I inadvertently signed up for a doozy. I don't, did you purposely give it to me? No, no. We were just, we just looked at dates. <clears throat> I think most of us read or hear this passage from Luke and we think, what? Why is he commended for being shrewd? Isn't he dishonest? Why did Jesus even tell this story? This passage isn't one that we go to when we're feeling discouraged and need a word of hope. At least, I certainly don't. I'm not sure about you. 
But another thing I've learned is how the fullness of the human experience is captured in the Bible. This year, I've had the privilege of participating in our Synod's leadership cohort for deacons and pastors. And every month, we dig into Scripture for our own curiosity and learning. There is a lot in the Bible. We are reading things that never come up in the lectionary and never show up on a Sunday morning. There are stories of misogynist violence and war, murder, sexual assault, demon possession, impoverished families left behind, and far more suffering than I would care to admit. Messy stories fill the Bible, so we can't faithfully just throw them all out or skip over them. We sometimes want everything that's written in the Bible to be an instruction book for life. But scripture is so much more than a book of rules. It's filled with history, poetry, and prayers, letters, and confusing prophecies, and so much more. And I truly believe that God speaks to us through the Bible, even if all scripture is not instructional. There are lessons to learn and there are words of hope to glean in the midst of challenging narratives and perplexing messages. So one of the tasks of the preacher is to find and proclaim good news. So why don't you put my shoes on for a moment? Where do you hear good news in this reading? If you look at the story, where do you find hope? Where is there hope for all of us? Now, I hate to disappoint you, but I don't have any magical insight of what Jesus was trying to teach in this parable. And to be honest, I don't really think there's a right answer. answer. I don't think Jesus left us this puzzle to solve. But I can find good news. I wonder, what was this experience like? for the debtor who had 20% of the remaining balance erased. Or for the borrower whose debt was slashed in half. Would this not be absolutely good news? I would be beyond surprised if anyone listening today has never been in some sort of debt situation. Debts can hold us hostage and keep us from living fully. Debt's been part of my life, too. Medical bills, student loans, car payments, credit card debt have all weighed me down. There was a time years ago that looking at bills every month would bring me to tears trying to figure out who to pay with the limited funds available. And I'm sure others have had that same experience. I vividly remember receiving the news that a large portion of my medical debt had just been forgiven after I'd been paying at it for years. It was such a relief. The weight of that debt was overwhelming. What a gift for it to simply be released. I'm afraid far too many of us know the power of debt in our lives. And so isn't this story a bit like the God who forgives us after years of failure? Who lets us start over with the gift of new life Doesn't God release us inexplicably from the weight that we carry? 
You see, debts hold us captive. They control us and demand that we attend to them. Whether for the person living paycheck to paycheck or the rich business person who hires someone to deal with their debtors, like in our story today, or has to send overdue notices again and again and again. Debt demands we serve it. And this isn't the kind of service that we do out of love and care for others. That is diakonia. Here in Luke, it's dulia. This is slavery. Control. This is a yoke of servitude. So in this perplexing parable, I do hear and see good news. The weight of slavery has been lightened for the debtors and the rich man alike, who are both controlled by worldly resources in different ways. God's liberation goes in both directions. And it's not based on anyone deserving it. In all the confusion of this story that Jesus tells, one thing is clear. The statement that ends our reading today, you cannot be a slave to God and wealth. The release from debts opens us up to be yoked to God in discipleship. For we have had so much forgiven in God's love. We have all received release from that which seeks to control us. Wealth, sin, and the ways of this world. God has released us from all that distracts us from true diakonia, serving others through God's love. And to me, this is fantastic news. It reminds me that there is hope for me yet. There is hope for each of us who find ourselves in servitude to something. Anything other than the life-giving power of God's loving kindness. Maybe for you, the good news you hear in this complicated parable is something completely different than what I've spoken about today. That is just fine. God speaks hope into our lives in different ways, with different messages, at different times. Praise God for the living power of these holy scriptures which speak into our hearts today. And in closing, I just want to thank all of you who have allowed the Holy Spirit to speak to you through these scriptures and produce some artwork out of it. Please take some time today or in the coming weeks to view the incredible art exhibit on scripture here at Faith. Maybe Luke's passage today didn't say much to you, but 33 individuals and groups have graciously shared an artistic expression of how they have encountered God in the Bible. So may you find good news in both the words and the visual expressions of the Holy Scriptures. Thanks be to God. Amen. And please let us sing together. Stay seated. Um, We will be singing if you would wish to use your hymnal at 655, Son of God, Eternal Savior. Choir, you're invited to come up to the choir loft.
you for all of the ways that you continue to give and to be able to support the ministry here at Faith. We have the QR code up on the screen. Also, the, the boxes are by the doors if you'd like to drop off your offering after communion today. Uh, one of the ways that we give is through artwork in many different forms, in many different platforms. And so we lift up our voices in giving to God at this point, and we turn it over to the choir. We'll be singing a piece entitled Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, a hymn tune that is very familiar to you. Let us pray, O gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together in one bread, let us now gather our prayers for the church for those in need in all of God's good creation. O oh God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Help us to gracefully forgive the debts of others as you have gracefully forgiven us. We ask that you accompany the newly baptized to be with Waylon and bless Drew and Kirsten in their marriage. Walk with each of us in our daily journey. O oh God of grace, Hear our prayer. Divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how to best care for the earth and all of our resources. Guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. We thank you for the artistic talents of this congregation, the artists who've used various platforms to give witness to your beautiful creation. O oh God of grace, hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, You've lifted up those who are oppressed. We ask that you breathe justice into us, sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency, and emergency shelters, especially the Hugo Family Shelter, settled, walking with a purpose, stepping stones, community helping hands, and family pathways. O oh God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, bless this congregation 
Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of our resources so that we can help others. Be with those who suffer in body, mind, and soul. Walk alongside caregivers who are strained and weary. We lift up today especially Al Reddig and Declan, Gail Harless, Shirley Flair Moen, Marilyn Jukins and Audrey Platon, Clarice Beattie and Irene Anderson, Steve Wells and Kurt Nelson, for Glenn Anderson and Bill Hoare, for Dan Lefevre and Doug Streitz, for Doug Holton, Al Weaver, and Joyce Winnick, for Julie Tiji and Dwayne Olson, Don Craig and Gene Anderson, for Dolores Weida, Kurt Weida, Sandra Mathern, for Mark Hendrickson, for Bob, Rachel, Cooper, Abby, and Lori. Walk alongside Mark Gilligan and Joan Hanel. Be with Scott Crater, Kathy Rigg, Barb Samrock, Dan Barthel, and all of those names that we lift up silently in our hearts or out loud. O oh God of grace, hear our prayer. And gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all of our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to put your hand upon your heart. As we share together in this blessing, we know that as we've marked our heart with this cross that we go out into this world blessed by God, we share together. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's faith shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And may the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. We're going to sing together, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so it was in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Take this in remembrance of me. And so together we join in the words as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the grace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The body and blood which we will now receive strengthen and keep us in God's grace. The table is set. Those who are helping with communion, you're, you're welcome to come forward at this time. Congregation, you can have a seat. As you receive communion, you can come forward to the station at the direction of the ushers. As you receive the uh, bread or the wafer, uh, as, as you receive the wafer, 
there is the gluten-free option, and there is also uh, grape juice available. So if that is what you prefer, just ask the server. They will point you to the right direction. As you head out, there's baskets to be able to discard your cup, and you can head right out. I uh, know that there's some special treats out there today, too. So we invite you to help yourself, have some time for fellowship, be able to enjoy the beautiful artwork that is on display. A uh, special welcome to families to stick around after uh, faith break in about 1030. We'll start hanging together and have the kids go off and have some fun activities. This table that is set before us today, all are welcome. We, we know that God has, uh, in God's infinite love and grace for us, has welcomed us to this table with open arms. Whatever burdens are weighing us down, know that God is here to say, those debts are forgiven. All are welcome to receive. Let's come forward to receive that gift. Mm -hmm. 